this video we're going to look at how we add messages to an autoresponder from autoresponders show list and you can see all of the autoresponders that you have available to you and along this line you'll see different options these will cover in the next video but you have uh, different options available to you now to add messages to your autoresponder you can hover over the choose action and click on messages or you can click on the number uh, underneath the messages column which will take you through to another screen where you can add the follow-up messages that make up the autoresponder sequence to do this again hover over the I want to uh, button and click add a message to this autoresponder this brings up the next screen which contains everything you're going to need to um, add a message to your sequence in the first tab settings this is where you decide when to send the message and the status now the options that you have here are inactive and skip inactive and block and live in order to have this message ready to send you will need to click on live and if you need to know what the other options are as always the question mark when you hover over it will bring up the options now when someone has subscribed to an autoresponder they're looking to get a message either immediately or as soon as they've clicked the confirm link so your first option would be to um, select when to send and the first message would normally be immediate or next run for other messages afterwards you can set the interval in hours days or specific days of the week depending on your requirements I personally do not approve a message for sending immediately in case it gets sent this allows us to test a message so uh, for the time being we will leave this as unapproved by not checking in the box okay and the day time settings you do have the ability based on your time zone to decide when emails will be sent now if you're dealing with uh, businesses that are open Monday to Friday there is no point in sending an email on a Saturday or Sunday so you would uncheck for example the Saturday and the Sunday if uh, a message if they do subscribe for example they're at home on a Saturday the system will, will uh, be intelligent enough and send the message on the Monday subject to what you've selected here you can also select the earliest time to send and the latest time so it's up to you when you send those messages um, generally speaking because you know email marketing is uh, a worldwide thing most people in most cases will just allow emails to uh, be sent at any point the never allow to be resent option is very very useful um, in line with what we covered in a previous video there may be times when you only want an email to be sent to a subscriber once uh, the first email in a sequence or a special offer or things like that if you don't want this email to be resent to that subscriber if they resubscribe at a later date to uh, this autoresponder sequence simply put a check in the box there the tracking and reporting is really really useful and we recommend uh, that you click on this and click in the open rates and this will uh, track people that open your emails and give you some form of reporting uh, on your open rates please bear in mind that open rates are not a totally accurate measure uh, this relies on putting a small image in the email which is not visible and some systems strip out e um, images and it would affect the metrics when you measure the open rate in the message tab this is where you send uh, set your subject line okay um, 
I tend always to send a multi-part uh, message which is a, both a plain text and an HTML message all at the same time. Uh, there are pros and cons for all three but in general you will get better deliverability if you send a plain text uh, and HTML multi-part message. We'll cover templates at a later date uh, but let's just cover quickly the options you've got to go through for the plain text and HTML content. For the purposes of this short video I've created some lorem ipsum text and I'll just paste that in there. Um, in the plain text content that you see here, this blue line represents a wraparound for email clients that use text. And what you'd need to do, you don't have to, but we'd suggest that you um, go through and just format the email uh, like so, making sure that none of the words overrun the blue line and you can go through there uh, and do that. In the HTML content um, you need to have exactly the same content in your plain text area and your HTML content area. So click on the toggle editor and this brings up your HTML um, area where you can add your email. I'm going to paste the text in that you see there and this email would now be ready to send. But of course we want to personalize the email and the way you would do that is here you have add personalization content tags. Now when you click on this it brings up a new window which gives you access to all of the personalization tags that you have available to use. So I'm going to select first name and you copy and you paste in. Now it's important here that um, you remove the square brackets uh, around the default value. They're literally only to give you guidance as to what the default term would be. And the way this works is like this. So I've just created high first name and there and put those in the tag. Now if your subscriber has given you their first name they will see hi John and if you don't have their first name they will see hi there and that's how you add some personalization. You've got other tags to experiment with and you can put those in to your emails like this. Okay now the layout tab in the previous video uh, we told you where you could add the header and the footer, the top and the bottom of your email. Uh, we'll cover templates and headers and footers in another uh, video but for the time being let's just stick with the basic email format. If you want to uh, add an attachment you can, you have to add that somewhere else. We don't recommend adding attachments to email uh, as it can cause issues it's best to create a link and send your uh, readers to somewhere else where they can download what it is that you want to give them. Uh, again, uh, you have the ability to include this in message into the autoresponder feed or the RSS feed that we discussed earlier and you've got the different formats available to you. We'll cover that in a separate email but pretty much um, the basics are, let's just change this so that we can uh, mess email message one so that we can discern that and then save the message and this will save. It comes back to the follow up messages and we can now see that we have one message in the autoresponder. You can preview what the message looks like at this point. Uh, there's the text version. You see the without the personalization it says hi there. And you can see here the HTML version. And 
as we mentioned before because we've allowed in the autoresponder settings to manage your subscriptions the link uh, that would help you comply with uh, the various international anti-spam laws is already in place for you if you want to test the message click on test we recommend that you uh, test the message before you uh, make it go live send yourself the um, multi-part HTML message choose the email address that you want it to go to you can change this if you want and click on send a test email and that uh, will be sent off for you to review the message prior to authorizing it um, what I can tell you now is that where you see this sign here the exclamation mark once you're happy that the message is um, good formatted correctly correctly spelled looks good you need to approve to send it you click on the approve to send the warning message goes and the status goes to live and as soon as you do that anyone that is in that autoresponder sequence or subscribe to the autoresponder will get that message if you ever want to undo it to make changes you can click on the edit and uncheck the approve for sending save the changes the system will catch up on itself and we get the warning message there so that you know that that message won't be sent we'll cover adding uh, more messages to an autoresponder in the next video